Hello everyone, I'm Christopher Salazar. I'm 5'10 and I'm reading for the part of Jack Absolute. I'm working in Los Angeles this week, so I'm putting this tape together for you. Thanks so much for the opportunity. Jack, I've been considering that I grow old and infirm and shall probably not trouble you long. I'm sensible that the income of your commission and what I've hitherto allowed you is but a small pittance for a lot of your spirits. Sir, you are very good. And it is my wish, while yet I live, to have my boy make some figure in the world. I have resolved, therefore, to fix you at once in a noble independence. Sir, your kindness overpowers me. Such generosity makes the gratitude of reason more lively than the sensations even of filial affection. I'm glad you're so sensible of my attention. And you shall be a master of a large estate in a few weeks. Let my future life, sir, speak of my gratitude. I cannot express the sense I have of your munificence. Yet, I presume you would not have me leave the army. Oh, that shall be as your wife chooses. My wife, sir? Aye, aye. Settle that between you. Settle that between you. A, a wife, sir, you say? Aye, a wife. Why? Did I not mention her before? No, sir, not a word. Odd so. I mustn't forget her, though. Yes, Jack, the independence I was talking of is by marriage. The fortune is saddled with a wife. But I suppose that makes no difference. Sir, sir, you amaze me. Why, what the devil's the matter with the fool? Just now you were all gratitude and duty? I was, sir. You talked to me of my independence and the fortune, but no word of a wife. Why, what difference does that make? Odd's life, sir. If you have the estate, you must take it with the livestock on it. As it stands. If my happiness is to be the price, I must beg leave to decline the purchase. Pray, sir, who is the woman? What's that to you, sir? Come, <laughs> give me your promise to love and to marry her directly. Sure, sir, this is not very reasonable to summon my affections to a, a lady I know nothing of. I'm sure, sir, tis more unreasonable in you to object to a lady you know nothing of. <laughs> Then, sir, I must tell you plainly that my inclinations are fixed on another. My heart is promised to an angel. Then pray let it send an excuse. It is very sorry, but business prevents its waiting on her. But <laughs> I pledged to her. Let her foreclose, Jack. Let her foreclose. They are not worth redeeming. Besides, you have the angel's vows in exchange, I suppose. So there can be no loss there. You must excuse me, sir, if I tell you once for all, in this I cannot obey you. Jack, I've heard you for some time with patience. I've been cool, quite cool, but take care. You know I am confined itself when I'm not thwarted, no one more easily led when I have my own way. But don't put me in a frenzy. Sir, I must repeat it. In this, I cannot obey you. Now damn me, if ever I call you Jack again while I live. Nay, but hear me. Sir, I won't hear a word. But I... Not a word. I... Not one word. So give me your promise, by a nod. <laughs> what, sir? Promise to link myself to some mass of ugliness to men? Sirrah, the lady shall be as ugly as I choose. She shall have a hump on each shoulder. She shall be as crooked as the crescent. Yet I will make you ogle her all day and sit up all night to write sonnets on her beauty. This is reason and moderation indeed. None of your passion, sir. None of your violence, if you please. It won't do with me, I promise you. Indeed, sir. I never was cooler in my life. 